AI in Action is brought to you by Aulis International, covering your business's staffing, consulting, and networking needs. Our host brings you the leading minds in AI, sharing their story, their success, and their advice. Focusing on fast-tracking you to the top, AI in Action cuts through the hype to help you kickstart your data science career. To listen to the latest AI in Action podcast, head over to www.aldis.com forward slash podcast, or subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Podcasts. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Aldus podcast. I'm your host Ben Sparks and today we are continuing with our ServiceNow series, interviewing some of the best and brightest leaders, executives and technical talent from across the ServiceNow ecosystem. Today we are very lucky to host Raja Gangavangpu from Walters Kluwer. Raja currently holds the position of VP Software Engineering in the Enterprise Global Business Services team at Walters Kluwer. He is an IT executive and leader with a focus on digital transformation, cloud, ERP, and AI technologies. Raja has managed global dis- uh, dispersed teams of over 700 people. Raja has delivered um, over 100 critical applications and has managed large, complex programs that have seen exceptional operational and budgetary benefits across the organizations he's supported. In this conversation, Raja will be covering some of the more macro trends that are driving transformation in his sector, his views on building high performance performance teams, especially digital transformation teams, implementations and best practices and key learns, some of his career story and some mentorship. He's also going to talk about the intersection of AI and digital transformation as well. So we've got quite a bit to cover there, Roger. I hope you're ready and welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Um, Thanks for inviting me and I really appreciate it. I'm really excited about this opportunity to share my background uh, and then hopefully it helps and helps me (laughs) to learn uh, from this experience as well. Excellent. Well, let's get stuck in. So obviously, Walters Claw, everyone's, I hope people have heard of the name, but for those that haven't, can you give us a quick high level overview of the organization? Absolutely. Walters Kluwer is based out of the Netherlands and we are a global company and uh, Walters Kluwer provides information for professional information, software solutions and services for clinicians, accountants, lawyers and tax finance audit risk compliance and regulatory sectors. There's a pretty broad sectors we service. It is, it is. And I'm interested in your question later when we talk about sectors, which area you're going to choose. You've got quite a lot there. So let's talk about your role, obviously a vice president, but you know, can you talk us more about your role and some of the responsibilities you hold in, in the organization? Oh, absolutely. Uh, well, of course, besides the service now, I have responsibility for what we call corporate systems like Workday, Coupa, some of the systems used uh, across the organization. And also I have part of my responsibilities, including business intelligence and all the systems underneath that. And also I support our health division. And along with that, I have what we call global QA, quality organization, and a global technical project management. Wow. So let's, you know, zoom out a little bit. I know we'd love to give our listeners an overview of who they're listening to specifically. So, you know, what's been your career to date? And maybe you can tell us a bit, a bit of a story about where, how you landed at Walters Clure as a vice president. My career started in the mid-90s and, and touched all aspects of IT in the last 25 years. I managed the teams up to 800, distributed globally and was part of a startup try to be entrepreneur, but failed. Well, without losing much, of course, but nonetheless, we failed and learned a few things from that experience. And I became a consultant and then part of corporate IT and uh, worked in various industries as, through as part of the journey, such as healthcare, banking, and software product services company. It is quite a fascinating journey and learned so much. And of course, still learning. Uh, probably that will never end, hopefully. And I have also published articles and talked in technical forums and also mentored different diverse set of people, uh, particularly when you're moving away from mainframe architecture to distributed entire architecture, and also dabbled in methodologies and how to adopt iterative processes, but still how we can maintain a waterfall methodology and also move people away from purely building application oriented to a product oriented approaches. So you mentioned the startup and I'd love to know a bit more about some of the key career moves and maybe even some of the learns and milestones you've had along the way. 
Oh yeah. If I look back and it's, it's a lot of pain at the same time, a lot of learning and a lot of you know pleasurable moments. So I started with a startup as, as I just uh, asked Ben, and this startup is about to build ERP solution for a small and mid-tier companies. This is actually later part of 19th and what we tried to do and then didn't really work out because of the dot-com kind of boom came, we shifted our gears. And then as we stumbled into, stumbled various areas within to make it happen for various reasons, always think, go back and think about it, but but still a great experience. And then moving to consulting, try to work through that and work, work in various industries. And that was really my first tipping point, moving away from that failure to a consulting and kind of sharing my experiences, what I learned from that, from that failure, if you call. But again, it's not necessarily failure from that, but what we learned from it is just much more. And as I moved through uh, another opportunity that came in my way as thinking about inflection or tipping points, uh, another opportunity was to run an outsourced company, uh, but that didn't work out. This is not a failure, but definitely it just didn't work out for various other reasons. But you know, it's a very interesting learning experience at the same time, what I should not do also is what I learned from that experience. So from that, from all those experience, and then, then we, I, try to move the corporate side and let's see corporate how the corporate ID suits me. And from that point on, it's a fascinating, interesting journey through financials, industry, manufacturing, healthcare, and now finally into the software solution industry and learning, learning. That's what I would say as part of my, all the changes that I had gone through. Amazing. Thanks for sharing that. When we look at some of the macro trends driving digital transformation, I think it's fair to say you're front and center of a number of different technologies. What are you hearing and seeing there out there in the in, in the customers at the moment? As a cloud adoption, which is definitely the talk of the town, talk of the globe, and definitely cloud adoption, and of course with the highest security is a, is number one is out there as part of this digital transformation or digital journey. And then for us, there's a global adoption with a multi-language support, multi-regional support is a key component for us. And, and also know your customer, not only locally, but globally, know that you have a 360 view of your customer so that you continue to serve and capture more opportunities, but really the serve your customer is more important. So those are the three, I would say, there's a macro trends driving the industry and digital transformation. Fantastic. And as I mentioned before, you've led some uh, amazing initiatives relating to transformation. Can you maybe talk us through some of the the, the highlighting sort of uh, programs that you've been involved with? So really just to narrow it down to, which is still the problem, is that moving from legacy and custom-based solution to industry standard, such as ERP solutions or CRM solution, that journey is still a lot of people are undertaking. That's one of the areas where, we, where, I, where I help to transform quite a bit. And then you know, I was in a healthcare industry during a very critical time in America, which is a Affordable Care Act coming in, also known as Obamacare, and just having organization ready to do come that's a fascinating journey or a fascinating change where I really helped uh, you know, to move towards uh, towards a change and also make the company digitally ready, having a data integrated properly, no silos. And also having said that, again, organization moving from that siloed, data is everywhere, right? And don't distribute the data for just because you need data in different systems, but have a data properly uh, maintained in one place and have a real-time integration with all your digital channels. It's no longer a web, no longer mobile. There are different areas where users are community consuming the data. And this is where the machine learning platforms are enabling more of that process. Fantastic. And machine learning, again, another little good segue there. We're hearing a lot about how I suppose there's an AI and machine learning intersection with now digital transformation. And we do also have a very large AI listener base. Again, very wide question, but I'd love to explore that a little bit more. Can you just talk a little bit more about how and why we're seeing that happen? For me, the AI machine learning and digital transformation not necessarily intersecting or an overlapping. For me, they are the pieces of intertwined threats and they go hand in hand, they go together and then make the organization stronger to reach its goal. So we cannot treat them in isolation or have a little bit of overlapping, but they are really so intertwined architecturally design approach 
working with the business is so important to talk about them in a, in the same context. And also AI and machine learning provides a new capability, whereas architecture was built on top of r- rapidly evolving information processing capability today. Cloud is also lending into it where you can process humongous amounts of data you know, in the cloud and it's, you know, very, very quickly. And this is where machine learning platforms are taking advantage of and putting that architecture designed together for organization to achieve uh, their digital transformation. Thank you for that. And it's such an in, in exciting time. Um, so let's talk service now for a moment. Again, as we mm-hmm. said, we've got a, a large AI presence. We've also got a large service now list base. Talk to me a little about the roadmap and, and, and how service now is brought into the into your business. Oh, absolutely. It's a service now is brought in for us to automate ITSM processes based on ITIL and various methodologies and provide the digital footprint. I know we're talking a lot digital. Now this digital footprint or digital transformation is internal and how you make end-to-end uh, fluid and smooth. The service is extended to what we built using ServiceNow for is end user computing and for to serve our internal users and in this case, our customers for the system and, and also provide the compliance and regulation related to areas such as SOC 2. And I think it's fair to say that not all implementations run perfectly. I'd love to know if you don't mind sharing a bit about the challenges you might have had when bringing, bringing this platform to, to the forefront of the organization. Oh, absolutely. This is an area where every organization, depending on the experience and and knowledge they gain, still may stumble and which we are no longer an exception to that. So our, you know, some of the challenges we faced is the initial setup. Know how you need to set it up correctly. We stumbled a little bit on that when setting it up correctly. Now there's enough knowledge industry where hopefully many such things don't happen, but still one has to pay attention to that. And also organizing and putting the teams together initially. So what we eventually did, which I'll talk later upon, of the time hopefully is how you need to support from standards body which is standardizing the processes etc and the implementation group and i think you need to separate out that but that's what led to our some of the initial challenges where people put together process ended up implementing and they lost what is a true standard should look like and also have a right design to accommodate a rapidly evolving organization and meet the demand, such as we need to do a lot of data center consolidation and that too globally. So you, we need to have, we should have hopefully should have taken a proper step, but that's one, some of the, yes, one of the key challenges we face there. And also socializing the approach and getting consensus is very important. ServiceNow, other, other tools like that out there to standardize, it's a new paradigm, new shift. So you just need to approach properly, uh, socialize with everybody, and make sure they agree to it or at least contribute to how they view that. And also clear understanding what digital footprint means. And now we are in, in year number five, and what we learned over the last several years is fantastic, but still we didn't really, that lack of understanding was a digital footprint also caused some challenges for initially. And also tool versus process standardization. Again, I mentioned this, but I keep elaborating. That's what one of our key challenges we faced initially. And and the dependency on other tools to integrate. For example, we use Workday for HR systems where your hierarchy of organization reside, integrating with them, integrating with all the systems. You, you one should have a right approach. We ended up changing while while we went on as we learned. And the approval process, because the key thing is all approving the tickets properly. And we thought we got it, but we learned quite a bit too as, as we went along. That's the kind of a challenge we had faced. That those so so some of the challenges are, are encapsulated uh, right. And obviously, what are some of the learns that you've had from that have sort of come from yeah, from these experiences? Oh yeah. See, once you have, let's assume you have all the right standards. That's what we realized, and we learned from it, and we started working towards it. The right standards. The governance in our place together, we'll bring it all together and explain the people what the standards are and get the feedback and right design process set up. We changed, we tweaked and we modified as we went along. We're tweaking for the right way though. The challenge is making sure they are, everyone agrees and sticks to the standards. We thought we did, but that's a constant learning. And I will say even today, we're learning from that and how you bring the 360 view of approvals and conformance of your process and how the tool should present the view to end user. And also true impact to the organization. We are 
global, huge organization, and one area may not translate exactly the other area. So just make sure you understand that. And also making sure ServiceNow is a corporate tool. It is, it, it's impact is global, it impacts everybody. Recognize that fact and what it means. And then continue feedback. As I mentioned, this is one probably I'll be keep harping on how you keep getting feedback from these diverse groups. So those are some of our key learnings. There's some fantastic ones there. So if you were to go and do it all again, I suppose a better question would be if you were advising a C-suite executive or, or offering your kind of key areas of advice on a, a C-suite executive embarking on some new transformational change in enterprise, what would be your kind of top three or four points? Oh, that's a great question. One I would say for sure is have a clear mandate for a change and direction of of such a change. And again, a few years passed by since we implemented, but if I look back and we should have a, though there was a mandate from our uh, IT team standpoint, there was no global mandate per se. So how it all plays out, that definitely is one thing one has to pay attention to. And again, it probably you're going to, you might have heard what I'm going to say now, but I will still repeat it is, know that the transformation is painful. And this transformation is different from other transformations, for example. So ready to fail quickly in the sense that implement something what you may think should work, but make sure get a feedback quickly. And if that doesn't work, make a change so that you do your course correction early enough and hire and coach right teams. Now there's more knowledge uh, in the, out there and you can get more people. But when we started, that knowledge is not deep enough. Of course, there's ITIL knowledge there, widespread, but knowledge about service now, how you do it properly is not there. But still, hire the right teams and coach them properly. The last one is separate the feedback from each of these distinct groups, addressing as per the merit of each one. When I say distinct groups, you have infrastructure support, you have security, you have end user computing, and there is a general request when you're integrating with HR system. They are very diversified functional areas, and you treat them as per the merit of them and address them correctly. Don't apply what you did in one area and try to apply in other areas. So that's what I would say as the last one for somebody to try to embark now. So we we mentioned before you've ran and built global teams. I'd love for you to walk us through some of your uh, advice for people who are not only embarking on transformation in their business, but are also looking at how to be how to support that internally with with staff and also externally. What's your advice for building a winning transformational team? Throughout the career and as I learned and, and gained experience, there are three guiding principles that I have applied for any type of transformation. One, clarity of a solution, including clear problem statement. You need to have a, you need to understand the problem very clearly and then have a solution. As a leader, you want got to have that clarity of solution. That's where it starts. Communicate the implementation approach to the teams, directly your teams or the teams that you're servicing or you're partnering with. Everybody need to have a clear understanding of this particular implementation and have a clear understanding. And the really third one is confirm, create your own mechanism. I created my mechanism, confirm that the team truly understood the implementation. I used to play back, just to listen back, you know, how they're playing it back, what I heard, what they heard from me or from others. So that interaction really helped to settle in a lot of the problems to be resolved upfront than down the line. That's a, those are the three key principles I adopted and, and still they're really working good for me. And also I, luck has it, I had a fortunate to be working on various transformations, such as I mentioned this as part of a discussion in a few minutes back, is I helped to move systems from, the, from their mainframe architecture to interior architecture using Java or .NET and also standard middleware hubs. And in this part of the journey, including conducting, I have conducted some classes and coaching for the mainframe architects. They're very senior folks, very smart people. And of course, I learned from them too, but how they can approach from mainframe type of architecture to distributed architecture, and also how they can retool themselves. And also along with that, you know, methodology and SDLC is very important for your transformation and make sure you have that clearly understood and, and put in place and everybody follows that rigorously. And of course, there are enough compliances out there to 
gauge how you're doing it, but just make sure you have that. And I have dabbled with CMM process, but one great lesson learned from them is how fast, it's a very fascinating methodology. It really helped everybody to mature themselves, where it's very expensive and how you can balance cost versus implementation. And then moving from legacy ERP to standard packages like Oracle EBS, now is all Oracle, like, like in a cloud or any other cloud ERP solutions or SAP. And the key part of the journey is how you have a clear understanding of the process and make sure business drive the processes and the technology have a clear strategy and implementation. It's no longer just implementing an SAP, for example. It's really the whole ecosystem is what one need to understand. And, and also a couple of more built uh, transformed like uh, legacy migration. Legacy still many organizations are struggling with the legacy. What I have done moving from legacy system into modern architecture system is make sure you have that surgical migration approach, design, architecture, and solution without causing any business impact. Business will cooperate. That they cooperate with us, and as once they start seeing the impacts and the migration, sometimes they don't even know we migrated from a legacy and retired a legacy system. That's where some of the key transformations I have done. The last thing I would share with the audience is, in order to do all of the above, just I mentioned, building a proper team, you need to spend time with your team members. Don't delegate and make sure they have right training and help them to understand the methodology, nature of implementation, architecture, and provide the tools they need and just step away so that they have the freedom to implement. So what's next for platforms, including ServiceNow? So focus is a procuring, gathering, you know, talent right now for us and having knowledge in ServiceNow but also ideas and processes because we really, really don't want to be like, oh, I implemented uh, service now and may not have such a strong idea, some knowledge and, and then vice versa. And I just make sure we still have focus on gathering and, and maintaining talent who has a combined knowledge is very important, right? And external partner support, but but what really you start creating internal talent in again service now and ITSM security operations and various processes and and particularly is very important when when you're trying to adopt such as a FedRAMP is a federal regulation where it mandates certain way where the team is structured so very important to understand upfront and have things put in place and and it, it continues to grow and learning processes are put in place again service now is happening is a new happening area out there make sure people have a continuous way of learning how the tool is going to evolve. And what about more generally in the overview, if you're looking forward in transformation in enterprise, what does your crystal ball tell you the future is going to look like? The support for critical ideas and security operations and GRC, along with the DevOps are paving the way for service now and then getting us to the next path. And the ever-changing cloud, it is an ever-changing cloud for me because each cloud is becoming its, its own thing and how you want to adapt to the cloud. And there's the fewer standard versus there's you know what AWS does versus what Google does versus what issue does. But make sure you understand that and service you, service no adoption is implemented properly there. And then and within that, the, the capability auto discovery to support CMDB, uh, that's a critical component because CMD makes is really that foundation one need to have for various things and particularly security and compliance to achieve those are, is, is very critical for that. And end to end DevOps is also important, but ServiceNow should, in my view, it should learn to coexist with other tools such as Jira, but that's one area where I think it's a lot of uh, evolution is going to happen and how we bring it all together. And in general, how service now developers own, own and work with other evolving tools, let's say for cloud optimization is also very important because there are other players are coming in to enable and help us how you don't spend too much money in the cloud. So they're all coming together. It's very important for us and, and for the industry. And, and and the integration and standard APIs and orchestration service now has a capability. That's an area where I'm really watching for it to evolve so that our integration goes smooth. We spoke earlier about building teams, and I, I think you gave us some really good advice there. What would your advice be to the leaders of those teams? And I'm thinking if in your eyes, effectively, what makes a great leader at an executive level in transformation? Yeah, tailor your message, but 
develop easy, short, and clear message how you want to transfer. This is an area, even I would be very honest, I'm also learning a great deal as, as much as I thought I accomplished quite a bit, but it is still you know very interesting for me too, and I pay a lot of attention to that. But for really that messaging is very key. Any distortion or any kind of deviation from it puts teams on a different path. So another one is just a three guiding principle I just mentioned about where as a leader, you have a clear understanding of a problem and, and the solution you are providing and communicate very clearly and make sure you have a feedback mechanism from the teams and in terms of how they are getting to it. And then just jump in. If there's a, there's a directionally, if there are things are moving in a wrong way, just make sure you do a course correction. Um, this is very important for, for a transformation leader. And also ready to face critical challenges. And this is where an area I, where I say they are, they're not saying my challenges could be different from others and from others. And there may not be a perfect solution that I've worked for me and work on what can work for others. But what I've learned and what I advise is, and just learn how to take the challenges and potential failures, but still thinking that could be not just maybe slowing you down, but should not preclude you to reach your end goal. This has been fantastic. You've given us so much to think about and each one of these topics could be their own podcast. So I really appreciate the, <laughs> yeah. the way you've approached the questions. Just in general, if you had to give yourself and go back and do it all again, and maybe go back to yourself and coming up through the ranks of directorship, what would be some of the key advice you'd give to your younger self? Oh, yeah, oh, that's a fascinating question. Hey, and I thought about it. Many thoughts crossed my mind. But one thing I kind of really topped is learn and apply how to take criticism in a positive way and find ways to rectify them. It, always I thought in the way back in the early days, people criticize my solution or approach. I thought I was taking the right way. I thought I was acting upon them, but not enough. And I wish I'd done more. And then again, nowadays, there's a lot of emotional intelligence going on, what it really means and what it's all about. I sure wish uh, these principles that are out there today were there when I was uh, young m m myself and wish I'd known about it but that's what i would tell young myself fantastic thank you and anything else you'd like to add before we uh say goodbye this has been i, I think I'm, I'm i'm done with all my questions <laughs> thanks ben and i really appreciate it it's a very fascinating questions and again thanks uh for this opportunity and hopefully your audience will have a great time with this podcast no doubt i'm looking forward to the next one we do roger thank you AI in Action is brought to you by Aldus International, covering your business's staffing, consulting, and networking needs. Aldus offer an exec search program. Aldus can help you discover how data science and AI can transform your company. With our unrivaled network of C-suite executives and senior AI professionals, we offer retained search services across the US and Europe. For more information, contact mark at aldus.com. Get the Aldus Advantage. Become a member of the Aldus community and enjoy some of the following. AI meetups. Once a month, our community gathers to listen to some of the leading experts in the world of data science and AI. Our speakers come from all over the world, including Dublin, Boston, and Frankfurt. We also have our AI mentors. Our experts will provide mentoring to all us members. And don't forget our AI on Action podcast. Each week, we have guests from all over the world talking us through their education, career, and more. Become an Aldus member and get the Aldus advantage. For more information and to sign up for our newsletter, log on to www.aldus. Com. That's www.aldus.com. Aldus International, empowering through AI.